Welcome to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series. Messages from the heart of God to let you know you can come boldly and confidently to the throne of grace. To receive mercy for your failures, find grace to help in good time for every need. That appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when you need it. Listen, God wants you to know the awesome privilege you have to come into personal touch with your Heavenly Father and to pray and to know His grace and power such that you could never ask too much from Him. God loves you, and He gave His best for you so that you can receive the best from Him. God knows the things you need before you even ask Him. And by His grace, He provides for you through his goodness, given by his unmerited favor, all that you need, not only in this age and world, but also in the ages and worlds to come. The beauty of God's grace is that it's infinitely gracious. In his grace, he not only withholds his wrath, but he positively saves you and delivers you from the power of sin. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And that's not of yourself, your own doing. It is the gift of God. Grace is God's kindness, his favor, a gift of blessing brought to you by Jesus Christ. His kindness that's bestowed upon you who could never deserve it. Listen, God favorably leans toward you to share his benefits through Christ Jesus. He freely extends to give himself away to you. He's always leaning toward you. I hear people say, lean unto God, but God's always leaning unto you. As he says, by the definition of his grace, grace answers directly to God. For it's God who freely extends himself. That means his favor, his grace. And reaching out toward you to draw you to himself. Because he's disposed to bless you and bring you near to him. Because he loves you and he's your father. And he knows and he wants you to have a personal relationship with him. Listen, God in his grace lavishly bestows upon you his infinite blessing. You do not deserve. And the grace he pours out on you is what you could never merit. Is his free gift of his undeserved and unmerited favor that gives you eternal life, infinite joy, being one with Christ and being made in the image and the likeness of Christ by the power of God. Listen, even when you were dead in your trespasses and sins and uncircumcision in your flesh and you by your own shortcomings, God made you alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave you the very life of Christ himself, the same new life which he quickened him He has given to you, for it's by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you were saved. That means he has delivered you from judgment and made you a partaker of Christ's salvation by his grace. God's grace is always his merciful kindness by which He is exerting his holy influence upon your soul that turns you to Christ and keeps and strengthens you and increases you in your faith, his divine persuasion to know and to understand and to feel through the very power of God all that he has for you And he exercises to and through you in the virtues that Christ gives to you by faith. For when you believe in your heart that Jesus died personally for your sins and that God raised him from the dead 
and you acknowledge and confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, you are saved by grace. Because by grace, God gives you what you don't and can never deserve. He gives you eternal life. He says, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John three fifteen through 16. And God adopts you as his child. When the fullness of time had come, God sent Christ, born of a woman under the law, his very word that became flesh, to redeem you who was under the law, that you might be adopted as a son by him. And because now you are a child of the living God, God has sent forth his spirit into you, and his spirit testifies along with your spirit, crying out, Abba, Father, Daddy, God, verifying and testifying with your own spirit and letting you know that you're no longer a slave, but a child of God. And if you're a child, that means you're also an heir of God through Christ Jesus. Galatians 4, 4 through 7. And that's what you are. He tells you, he makes you an heir, a joint heir with Christ. And you are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. For you have been glorified together with him. The very spirit of the living God testifies with your own spirit that you are a child of God and a joint heir with Christ and an heir of God. He gives you infinite riches in Christ Jesus. He's blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, as he says in Ephesians 1, 3. And he wishes above all things that you should prosper and be in hell, even as your soul prosper. He has blessed you in Christ Jesus through his grace with every favor, every grace, everything that you need. God provides for you. He lavishly bestows upon you what you need. And he does it by giving you his Holy Spirit, which he gives to you to receive all that he has for you through him who reveals it to you. Jesus himself said in John 16, he says he takes what is mine, the Holy Spirit does, and he reveals it to you. And he tells you that the gift of the Holy Spirit is one of the greatest gifts you can receive. He says, which of you being a father, if your son asks for a fish, you give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, you give him a scorpion? Of course you wouldn't do that. So then you... Though you might be evil, and you are evil, because you're filled with sin as a normal man that's not redeemed, how much more do you want to give good gifts to your father? I mean, give good gifts to your children. So how much more will your father, which is in heaven, give you the Holy Spirit to ask him, as he says in Luke 11 and 11 through 13? It's Christ who gives you the victory. And the power over sin. He died that you may live. And he demonstrated his great love for you in dying for you. That sin loses its grip over you. For it's no longer you who lives. But it's Christ that lives in you. Your body is the temple of the living God. The Holy Spirit of God himself lives in you. And you've been conformed to the image of Christ. For you whom God foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son, Jesus Christ, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, of which you are the brethren. You are the body of Christ. You are Christ's body. And he has delivered you from the power of sin and death and conformed you into his very image. God calls us all things to work together for you who love him and who are called according to his purpose, as he says in Romans. 
8.28. And God lets you know that he hears your prayer. Jesus himself tells you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and the one who knocks the doors open. These are all by God's grace that he lavishly bestows upon you. Therefore, I tell you, Jesus said, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you receive it and it'll be yours, Mark eleven twenty four. Then he tells you in John 14, 13 and 14, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. He will give it you. So ask. Ask. And by his grace, God gives you gifts of the Spirit. He tells you there's diversities of gifts. But it's by the Spirit of the living God whom he gave to you by his grace and goodness which you didn't deserve. There are diversities of the Spirit's gifts. And there's difference of ministries. But it's the same Lord. There's a diversity of activities, but it's the same God who works in you all in all. There's different manifestations the Spirit has given to each one of us to profit for all of us. For to one, he's given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But it's all the same one and the same spirit that works all these things, distributing to each one of us individually as he wills, as he knows that the Father has planned and directed us with the works we're to do, and he equips us with his gifts. Listen, the Spirit not only equips us with his gifts, but he produces the fruit of the Spirit, which is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control, such that there's no law against it. As he tells you in Galatians five twenty two through twenty three, and God gives you good works to do. He tells you, you are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which He preordained that you should walk in them, and do, which He prepared beforehand that you should walk in them, and He gives you the power and the desire to want to do them. And he fills you with his very spirit and his power to do effectively above what you can even think, hope, ask, or imagine by Christ himself working in you. And he will never remove his love from you or his gifts or his fruits. For his gifts and calling are irrevocable. He says, and he tells you, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans eight thirty eight through 39. Nothing separates you from the love of God. And then someday, you're going to see him face to face. For right now, We see dimly in a mirror, but then we'll see face to face. So even though we know in part, we will know in full on that day because we will see him face to face who has redeemed us and raised us up together with him to live forever in Christ Jesus And the list of these benefits that God lavishly bestows upon us by his grace goes on and on. But the important thing to know is that for us who have received the Holy Spirit, who is from God, given to us, that we might realize and comprehend and understand and appreciate 
the gifts of his divine unmerited favor, his grace, the blessings he so freely lavishes upon us by God himself. And he does this to make us a blessing to others. God blesses us with his grace to make us a blessing to others, to be the salt that people need, and to be the light that shines in the world for man to see. And then he draws people to himself through you. And then by his grace, which you have been saved, he saves others as he saved you. It's not because of their works, just like it wasn't because of yours. It's the gift of God. And so God lavishly bestows and pours out upon you, having received his life, grace upon grace. And he longs to pour out upon you his grace. He tells you that the Lord longs to be gracious to you in Isaiah thirty eighteen. And therefore, he waits on high to have compassion on you. <clears throat> yes, God lavishly bestows upon you his grace. He pours it out on you. And in him, you have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of all your sins, according to, listen, the riches of his grace, which he has lavishly bestowed upon you, as he tells you in Ephesians 1, 7 and 8. So what should your response be? To all this amazing grace that God has lavishly heaped up and poured out onto you. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all that is within you. Because you know that he loves you and he does the best for you. And he does it by his grace, which you do not deserve. You should be thankful. You should hold him in wonderful amazement and praise and worship his holy name. You should live wholeheartedly for him and not for yourself. You should imitate him as a dear child in being merciful and gracious to others who don't deserve it. You should ask him, what would you have me to do for a person? What would you have me to do? What would you have me to do for them, Father God? And then listen to his response. I found most of the time it starts with just praying for them. Even today, I had a young couple <clears throat> that had a breech birth and lost their child. And the lavish grace that they received from him so that they could understand that that child had gone to heaven. That's the grace of God making me a blessing to them because of the grace that God's given to me. And it's given them a hope and a future. And they know that God is their child with them right now. Listen, God always does what you don't deserve because he loves you. And he does it because of his grace and his mercy that he so lavishly bestows upon you. So if Jesus is offering you and God the Father's offering you, and the Holy Spirit's offering you all these wonderful benefits of His grace. How can you reject such an offer to live and to breathe and have your being in Him? God knows the things that you have need of even before you ask. So He says to you, Trust in me with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding." Acknowledge me in all your ways, and I will direct your path. I'm your good shepherd, and I will take care of you. And I will lead you and guide you in the way that you should go. You shall not want, because I'm the one who's taking care of you. I'm your strength, and I'm your salvation. I've been made unto you wisdom and righteousness, sanctification, redemption. And I have redeemed you from the curse of the law, and became a curse for you so that you could live with me eternally and have a personal relationship and union and fellowship with me. Remember, it's no longer you who live, but Christ lives in you, and he does it through the power of his Holy Spirit, who reveals to you the things that God has freely lavished upon you by his grace, which you did not deserve. So trust in God now. Say, Father, forgive me. 
I don't know what I've done. I don't know how to do the things I need to do. I just dismiss reliance upon myself and self-governance and empty my carnal ego and mean it. And God will start this very moment revealing to you those things that are more and more graciously great than you can imagine because he loves you and wants the best for you and he's willing to show it to you if you'll put your eyes on him and off the world in Jesus' name. Now to you, Father God, who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can even ask, think, hope, or imagine, to you be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Jesus' name, amen and amen.